we are going to change uh, gears now, and from mind bending splines, we are going to talk about stupid uh, shell scripts. Um, so, there are so many uh, open source tools um, that it seems like a very simple thing to, to create a perfect uh, photographic workflow on Linux. Like, if I want to import photos, I can either use an import module in Digicam or a dedicated tool like Rapid uh, Photo Downloader. If I need to keep tra tabs uh, uh, on my photos, I can uh, use Digicam. If I need to process uh, raw files, I don't have to tell you how many raw, pro raw processing applications are out there. If I want to publish my photos, there are also open source tools for that. Uh, it's all fine and dandy until we realize that um, there are some cracks in this uh, beautiful, smooth, uh, imaginary workflow. And I discovered some of these uh, cracks and I tried to, to develop um, uh, tools that will fill them. And today I'm going to talk about them. So the first tool uh, is probably one of the most popular ones, well, at least by my measure. Uh, it's called Little Backup Box. Uh, it is a set of uh, scripts, uh, Bash and uh, PHP scripts, that transform a uh, regular Raspberry Pi into a backup box. So you can use it uh, when, when you need to back up your photos uh, while traveling. So you don't have to carry a laptop and use it as a glorified uh, backup solution. You don't <coughs> need to have any uh, proprietary solutions like WD uh, wireless passport uh, disk, which is both expensive and uh, not upgradable, not tweakable. If the battery dies, you're pretty much screwed. So what you have is basically a Raspberry Pi running a set of scripts. My setup looks something like this. So this is what I carry with me at all times. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi uh, powered by Powerbank. And this is my very old phone running uh, web interface. That, uh, can, that you can use to control uh, a little backup box. So a little backup box can operate in, in three modes. The first one is uh, card, card backup mode. Um, so the idea is that you use a USB stick or high capacity USB stick as a backup uh, device, uh, backup storage. And you use a card reader uh, to, to transfer uh, the contents of the card uh, to the uh, backup storage. And in the card backup mode, this is what a uh, little backup box does. And it does so uh, completely automatically. So it detects, it has a very simple, even primitive mechanism for detecting the uh, storage device, then detecting the uh, card reader, and then copying the whole thing uh, to the uh, st storage device using RC. The second uh, mode is camera mode, which, is, which uses a script based on G-Photo. Basically, as soon as you connect your camera directly to, to a little backup box, it will uh, offload all the photos from your camera uh, to the storage device, uh, to the backup storage device. And the th third mode is uh, remote control mode. Uh, so in this mode, you can actually perform simple actions uh, or trigger a uh, card or or camera backups manually. And in addition to that, a uh, little backup box has um, the, min the DLNA and Samba servers. So you can, act in, you can activate it from, from the uh, web UI. So you can view your photos or stream your photos to any DLNA enabled device like your smartphone or your DLNA enabled uh, TV set. And you can, of course, uh, using uh, Samba, you can transfer files to, to, to other devices. So that was little backup box. So now that, that I started the problem with, uh, with keeping my photos uh, safe when, when I'm on the move, uh, the second problem is to, to offload them. Yes, you can use import module in Digicam, or you can use Rapid uh, Photo Downloader, but neither of these tools uh, did what I really wanted. And what I wanted was quite a lot. So what I wanted was to transfer uh, photos, <laughs> JPEGs and RAW files. I wanted to extract uh, basic uh, information like uh, camera model and lens model. 
Uh, I wanted uh, the script to fetch weather conditions uh, for, uh, for the day the photo was taken, because I'm obsessed with weather, so I want to know the exact weather uh, conditions when the photo was taken. And I want all this uh, data to be written in the comments field uh, of the exit metadata. I want the script automatically uh, write copyright notice. And I wanted the script to rename all my photos based on the uh, date stamp. And I wanted my script uh, uh, to, to organize all the photos in folders by date. So this is how Otto was born. This is, um, again, a relatively, a relatively simple, um, uh, let's see if this would, yeah. A relatively simple um, bash script, and it does exactly <laughs> that. So it transfers photos. It, uh, oh yeah, and I forgot one more thing uh, on my wish list, uh, to geotype my photos. So it's a basic, pretty basic script. If you run it, uh, from when you run it for the first time, it will ask you a few basic questions, like where do you want to copy your photos, the destination folder. Uh, it will prompt you to enter uh, the copyright notice. It will also ask you to specify your notify token, which is uh, a simple Android application which, uh, which can receive push notifications. So I run auto on my NAS. So when the, the uh, transfer is finished and when the script has done its job, it will send me a notification to my phone so I don't have to sit and wait uh, when it's done. So when you run the script without any parameters, it will do just that. It will assume that your photos are already geotagged. It will copy the photos, add the, in, in the data, uh, pages in the weather conditions, write everything uh, where it's supposed to be in exit metadata and organizes uh, the photos and raw files into folders. In addition to that, uh, you can specify several parameters. Like if you have, for example, a GPX file, if you use a, a, a geotracking application and you can save your tracks in, GP, in the GPX format, then you can use a special parameter to, to provide a, a path to this file and the script will uh, geocorrelate your photos. And if you have several um, uh, GPX files, uh, you can use another parameter, so it will combine, uh, merge all the uh, GPX files into one, and then we'll do a geocorrelation. If you don't have anything of this, you can perform uh, coarse correlation. Basically, you can use a specific parameter to, to, to specify the city where you took your photos, and uh, the script will fetch uh, approximate uh, geographical coordinates and we'll use them instead. So, the problem with importing photos uh, is solved, at least partly. I mean, none, none of my solutions are perfect. There are some weird things going on and I still can figure out uh, why they're doing that. Uh, there is still some weak spots, like for example, in, in little backup box, there is no mechanism, or at least there is no easy way to teach the device to recognize which uh, storage device is what. Like, you have to, to go through the specific uh, sequence. The first device you insert is considered to be a backup device, and the second one you insert is considered to be the source. Um, so they, this well, these are two screens that I use most of the time. Um, on my desktop, as you can probably notice, I use uh, uh, KDE as my preferred uh, desktop environment. And the best thing about the default uh, file manager in KDE is that you can specify custom uh, actions, um, context actions, meaning that in browser, when you right click on a specific file, you can get access to, to commands that you, you have created. So I have several things, um, I, several actions I use uh, very often. It's not very difficult to, to specify this, uh, to, to create these um, actions, but uh, if you have something like five or 10 of them, then it could quickly become a nuisance to create uh, an entry for, uh, for each year in every one of them. So I created a simple, it's not a script, but it's sort of a package that has all the elements required 
um, for, for these um, context actions. And there is an installer script that downloads everything, compiles the required stuff, uh, puts everything where it's you know, supposed to be. And what you have in the end is a very nice little menu that gives you access to all the actions. So as you can see, um, I can use it right click, I can geotype by city, uh, add exit comment, resize the image. This is particularly <coughs> useful if you like posting your images to, to your blog or, or websites or whatever. Uh, recompress using the absolutely excellent tool called JPEG archive. Uh, you can show geotype photos uh, on the map uh, and so on and so on. And finally, um, so I share office with uh, with colleagues uh, whom I describe as uh, privacy fundamentalists and they brainwashed me into leaving Google Photos, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everything. And I don't miss it. Best decision of my life. The only problem is, not a problem, the only uh, feature I sort of missed was what I call photos from the past. So you know that uh, Facebook it will uh, scan through your photos and uh, if the find photos um, from the past taken on, on today's date, it will sort of show them to you. I really like the idea, and I wanted to create something similar that would run on my NAS, scan, scan through my uh, uh, photo library, and do pretty much the same. And this is how NAS Passion was born. So this is a uh, solution, a tool that consists of two parts. Uh, first, there is a shell script that does pretty mundane thing, it run and goes through all the files, reads um, creation date, uh, date and time, uh, date and month, uh, compares it, uh, it with today dates, and puts all the found photos in specific folder. And after that, a uh, simple PHP script generates a page. So it looks something like that. This is an offline version. And yesterday I ran the script on my machine. Let's see if I can uh, show it to you. I didn't do it uh, today because, you know, that would be typical if I ran it and it didn't work, so... So it looks something like this. And um, as you can see, it also, uh, maybe you can't see, but uh, the captions of the photos comes from the comment field, and this is where the whole uh, weather thing is important, so I can immediately see what camera I used to take the photo and what camera and lens combo and what the weather was uh, at the given moment. So as I can see, very nice memories. Uh, seems like in 2015 I was running Tokyo at that point. So um, I have a little bit of time. Uh, as I said, none of these tools are perfect. Uh, Natsukashin, for example, is pretty slow because uh, it's in its nature. It has to go through every single file uh, read the dates, uh, creation dates, and uh, compare it, and so on and so on. So I have something like a couple of thousand photos on my NAS, and it usually takes between uh, half an hour and 45 minutes to go through through the entire collection. So usually I run it uh, uh, during the night uh, via cron job. But if you have any suggestion, suggestions how to make this script, faster, and if you have suggestions uh, how to improve the, the web front, um, I would be very grateful to hear them. So, that's pretty much it for now. Questions? Um, uh, do you do uh, cache verification, like checksumming when you copy? Because that has been me in the past when I uh, copy a file. Actually, my photo emulator does simultaneous backups. Mm -hmm. Whether I use hashes to, to make sure that uh, files are not corrupt. Is that correct? When, after copying. After copying. Uh, yes, I thought about that. Um, no, I haven't implemented it because I cannot code to save my life, as it said in the description. Um, so that's, that's the reason. I mean, it's, um, 
it's an interesting exercise for me because I'm not a programmer. <laughs> And it's uh, my, my only programming skill uh, worth mentioning is copy paste from uh, Stack Overflow. Um, but uh, I thought about that, and it would be a very, very good idea to, to Im implement it, just to make sure that everything is as it's supposed to be. Thanks. Yes? Do we use a web service to get the weather information, or how do we get the weather information? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, it uses Dark Sky API. It's not the best um, weather service. They can be sort of, yeah, their weather forecasts at least are not precise, but it's close enough. So it's that side. Uh, you can, um, I think, they have a free account. You can get uh, 1,000 uh, requests per day. After that, it costs some symbolic amount of money. Uh, I, I've been using them for almost a year. I still haven't received any, any bills from them. Yeah? If you start the photos into folder with the date, you need to search the photos now. Sorry? Yeah. If you put the date in the folder, yeah. you don't need to search the wallet photos for so. Yeah. <coughs> but you're right. But I try to make my script sort of more more universal in a way, so it doesn't depend on the name of the folder. So it reads the dates of what is in the file. So if you choose to name uh, choose a different naming convention for your for your photos, then the script will sh still work. At least theoretically, I haven't tried it. Thanks. By the way. I usually uh, talk about Digicam, and uh, normally my audience is like a quarter of uh, what it is now. So my conclusion is talking about stupid scripts is better than talking about Digicam. Oh. Do you know it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm here um, for the rest of the day. If you have any questions, and even better, if you have any bright ideas how things can be improved, um, uh, done differently, please. You might be able to store that hash and the ex extended attributes of the file itself. Yeah. That way you're carrying the hash yeah. for so long. I think I do that for some things. Huh? What's that? Well, change the hash. Any more questions? No, extended attributes. Thank you very much. Thank you.